Testing changed dramatically the skill level of the operator. Prior to testing, there was really no way to ascertain what was on the cannabis. And many of the varieties in cannabis today, if one wants to chemically drive them, nutritionally speaking, into a, a very uh, high level of production, they become very hypersensitive to environmental issues, such as molds and funguses, and pathogens such as pests. And so what you find is that the amount of cannabis that was chemically treated might have been maybe 88, 90% of the total. And so when we started to really get into testing, you started to realize that the predominant amount of cannabis grown, not just in Humboldt, but in the industry in general, was actually contaminated with products that were meant for horticultural purposes, not edible purposes. So ornamentals, things you would use to control the shape of a mum, uh, pachybutyrol, uh, growth regulators things that are designed to create appearance in a flower but never meant for human ingestion. Mycobutrinol, which is an equal 20, which is designed to keep uh, powdery mildew off of roses. Unbelievably concentrated in cannabis. And so these pesticides and, and fungicides and growth regulators, they all started to reveal that we had an educational deficiency. And I think that what you really got to see was that the growers in Humboldt County, a lot of them, were able to start to uh, realize that they would not have an ability to exist in the future if they didn't start to change their practices in terms of how does one work with this on a regulated level. And it was tough because we don't know what to use as a regulated level. So what we did was we took Oregon standards because Oregon pretty much had a pretty comprehensive coverage and it was pretty restrictive. So probably three, four years ago we started looking at Oregon's levels of what they were trying to put into play and Oregon helped us really start to understand better like what was the new allowances of what could be used, what was uh, legally allowed to be used. And you started to see cultivators start to really get into best practices, the integrated pest management concepts took off, uh, the beneficial insects took off, people made a huge change into organic methodologies of, of cultivation because organically driven plants typically have less problems. And so, it's interesting, but the testing changed the production methodologies, not just that customers get cleaner pot now, but there's also a cleaner production methodology in it. So the whole knowledge level increased dramatically. That's why I always give Samantha Miller such a shout, because Samantha Miller went on a one-woman show driving the importance of testing, why you use this, how you use these testing methods to improve your production, and now to keep us alive in an industry that's highly regulated, meaning that if your product doesn't pass the lab test, you can't sell it. And so for so many people who, who didn't really take that initiative early, they're gonna have to make the changes now. But for a lot of people in Humboldt, they really made the changes and they made the changes because they would get the lab results back and they would see that they were dirty. And it started to make an awareness that people don't understand residual so they don't really understand half-life of nuclear products, and they don't understand residual contamination from pesticides and fungicides, and exactly how long it takes for that material that was sprayed on your cannabis plants to dissipate to a level that's considered safe or non-detectable. And all of a sudden, it was an incredible education, and people started to realize that they not only were selling cannabis that was saturated and toxic, they were living in saturated and toxic production zones, because they were the ones applying it, they're the ones using it. And so all of a sudden the awareness started to increase dramatically and you started to see people make better common sense decisions just based off of this isn't good period. And so the testing allowed people to really start to make educated choices on what we used in production because prior there really was no real information and everyone would say, I think it's all gone, there's no residual left. And with testing you found out that you were really running almost toxic levels of it. And so it started to really key in all these producers that used it. And because I own a dispensary, well, I have two of them, but they're drop-offs for labs, which means that people bring me their products and we send it off to the lab for, for examination. So for the nine years that I've been running dispensaries, I've seen, I mean, an ungodly number of lab reports. And I know from the lab reports that we've seen an incredible change in what the contaminants are and what kind of drove a lot of it was, 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 was concentrates. See, concentrates became, you know, almost 48% of California's market as of right now. 
And because concentrates concentrate all things present, concentrates started to reveal residuals in a way that flower testing never did. So flower testing let us understand was it clean as flower, but concentrate testing let us understand is it clean as genetic source material, meaning were your mom's clean? You had to go all the way back to the material used to create the material you used to create your product. Because the, the, the extraction process concentrates to such a degree that it pulled non-detectable amounts from the flower and made it clearly detectable and clearly non-allowable um, for consumption. And so the concentrate industry is what really started to force people to fix the problems in the, in the back end of the business because the flower production they, they have clean, but the mothers have been historically so dirty. So for us at the shop, we had, like, I've been an organic cultivator for a while, but I would love to use the tools that other people get to use, but we realized that at some point when regulations kicked in, everyone would be under such a microscope that if we didn't really practice completely and understand fully, how do you actually control these problems to a workable degree, because you're not gonna get a, a, a sterile system in organics, right? It's gonna be a population of beneficial and predator. And so both of them, and prey, and they're gonna work on each other. And so ultimately, it's trying to learn what is the allowable balances, and to get customers to understand this, to get people in the real world to understand it. The chemical, pesticide, fungicide, growth regulator issue, it really created an artificial world of an unattainable appearance, an unattainable production amount, an unattainable ability to have certain cultivars in certain climactic situations. So it allowed people to get around a tremendous amount of true agricultural skill and practice. And I think that a lot of the humble guys really, really practiced and went up. So all in all, testing changed this area dramatically.